All right, continuing on from our last class, um, I just want to split the videos into two here. Um, but we were talking about the idea that Adam had uh, was doing mitzvot in the garden and somehow was building this spiritual cloth, clothing about him, or this kind of ruchniyot, this kind of aura of of mitzvot around him, and that was the cloth, the clothing he sort of wore, according to the Holy Zohar. Now, the the Divre Chaim, if you look in the text, he uh, continues on. He says. Um, uh, and in this way, with this clothing, um, and by this, he would come into the special clothing of the Holy Sabbath, with the clothing of mitzvot without limit, and all the world is elevated for the sake of this, as is explained in many holy books. So he brings the Shabbos into this, and I was surprised when I was reading this, I said, why is he bringing the Shabbos into this? I don't quite get it, but I, I, I think it's gorgeous here, though. He's saying... That the mitzvot we do, this builds this beautiful Shabbat clothing, this beautiful holy clothing. And this holy clothing, when we bring it into Shabbos, it's what dresses up our soul, it's what adorns our soul and really brings Shabbos. It's how we meet the Shabbos bride in our finest and our best clothing and our Shabbos clothing. That Shabbos clothing truly is, is the mitzvot that you did during the week, right? Is, is the spiritual clothing that you wore. That's really what it means to dress up for the Shabbos is to dress up in the mitzvot that you've done this that week. And, and that's really what makes you um, ready for Shabbos is, is doing mitzvot during the week and preparing for Shabbos that way. And not only that, as a true Kabbalist, he says that mitzvot that you do, that, that idea that you uh, adorn yourself for the Shabbos and the mitzvot of the week, um, that really uplifts the whole world around you. That really changes the, the reality, not just yourself, but everywhere around you. It brings godliness into the world. And it uplifts the whole entire world. It elevates the whole entire world. As do many of our mitzvot also uplift on the world in more of a Kabbalistic or mystical sense. And now we get to the, okay, he's going to turn around for a bit here. But according to his great intellect, meaning Adam had this wonderful seichel, wonderful brain, uh, wonderful intelligence, um, his intellect even being greater than his actions, he didn't act in a way that his actions would even be better than his intellect. Adam only clung to his intelligence and his elevated wisdoms. He did not know in his soul that everything needs something to clothe it, and wisdom without an action attached to it is nothing. As it is said in the Mishnah, he is similar to a tree with many branches but only a few roots. Now, obviously we have to prop have a problem with what Adam was doing because it said that he didn't have knowledge before, and now he has knowledge. What knowledge did he gain, and, and, and what was the problem here? What he, He's trying to explain this. And what was Adam doing wrong that, that, this, that this, this punishment fixed? The idea, according to the Tzanzer here, is that Adam had a lot of wisdom. Right? He was in, in Gan Eden. He knew all the wisdoms of the world. He was like attached to Hashem. He understood in the deepest way. all the, And he would sit there contemplating and thinking the deepest thoughts and maybe studying Torah and all this stuff. But he didn't really see the, see the need so much to do the mitzvot. Right? Do mitzvot. Maybe he just um, sat and thought and, and studied uh, the hardest page of Gemara or, or, or regardless of what it is. And was thought, thinking these very high thoughts. But he wasn't doing anything with them. He was just sitting there. Right? He wasn't doing anything. Um, and he thought, okay, if I just do and cling to my intelligence and my wisdom and all this stuff and have my contemplations, what else do I need to do? But he's, and the Tzanzer says he didn't know in deep in his soul, in his heart, that everything needs something to clothe it. Even your highest thoughts, even your most elevated comprehensions need an action to go along with it, otherwise they're meaningless. If you don't do something with that, act, that thought, do something with that elevated uh, uh, wisdom that you have. Right? He didn't know that everything needs a physical entity to close its spiritual power. Now, this is very much a Kabbalistic concept, but it's something that makes a lot of sense in our reality. For example, if you have a, a, a power, if you have electric running through your house, and, and someone came over, and they said, do you have a light in your house? I said, yeah, of course I have light in my house. I have electricity. They said, but it's not light. I don't know how to turn on, the turn on the lights. Well, the problem is you don't have a lamp, right? You don't have a physical thing in which the electricity can go into. You don't have a light bulb. You don't have a lamp. You need to go out to the store and buy a lamp. And then once you have a lamp and you connect it to the wall, the light bulb will turn on. And you have both 
the electricity in the wall connected to a physical body, the lamp, the light bulb, that which can shine out that light of electricity. So too, from the physical world of electricity, the spiritual world uh, of godliness. There's godliness in the world that we that that is possible to obtain through comprehension and thinking, and connecting to. Um, but the whole point of being a human being is to do physical actions in this world, and the doing of physical actions creates a vessel for that holiness, that godliness, so that it can be made physical within the world. And of course, that's God's dream, right? Because God is beyond time, beyond space, beyond all kinds of uh, physical matters, right? God, remember, we, we talked about Maimonides before. Um, Maimonides also said that God has to be an unmovable mover, or, or uh, basically that uh, God can't do actions in the world, because once God does a temporal action in the world, uh, God all of a sudden is changed, and God can't change. God is infinite and always the same and never changing. So therefore, uh, you know, that's, God, that's God's dream to be able to have something done in reality. And we're, we're taking away from that in some regard. So he says that, that, that Adam wasn't doing this. Adam wasn't making it into reality. He was only sticking with his comprehensions. And he compares this to the saying in Perikei Avot, he's similar to a tree with many branches but only a few roots, right? He's got all these roots up in there. He's got his head in the clouds. And he doesn't have his feet attached to the ground, right? He's not walking on the ground. He's walking in the clouds, right? We know that the tree will fall over if it has too many branches and not enough roots. So this is the implication of the verse going on in the text. That in the beginning they were not embarrassed, and they didn't worry about this since they had no clothing covering of mitzvot. For in Adam's eyes the essence is to gain wisdom, but after he came to know sin, as it was written about Avraham when he said to Sarah, and it came to pass when he came near to enter Egypt, and he said unto Sarah his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. All right, this is a complicated passage. He's drawing these concepts back into our text here, I meaning this is the implication of verse. Then in the beginning, they were not embarrassed. What were they not embarrassed about? Um, they didn't worry about this since they have no clothing covering of mitzvot, right? They, they weren't embarrassed because they didn't know that they have to have do mitzvot. They didn't know that, they, that, they didn't, that, this, that this physical coating, that this physical clothing mattered of, of, of the spiritual uh, reward for doing mitzvot is being covered by this clothing. They didn't realize this. They didn't realize this. So... What did they have to do? Right, he didn't realize this, and there was nothing to be embarrassed about because all he thought he did need to do was comprehension. Even though God commanded him that he should do mitzvot through the midrash that talked about avdal l'shomra to do and to guard, right, to serve and to guard, he didn't really know this reality that there was really an effect to not doing mitzvot, not having the spiritual clothing, right, that we're talking about. And he says this is exactly the same uh, way uh, that happened in a different place in the Bible, uh, as it's about to quote. Um, for in Adam's eyes, the essence is to gain wisdom. But after he came to know sin, as it was written about an, uh, about Abraham when he said to Sarah, uh, this is to bring up a passage in the, later in the Bible, when Abraham was coming to Egypt uh, during the times of the famine to get food, and he came to uh, have to uh, protect Sarah, protect himself um, by saying that uh, they're going to kill me because Sarah is beautiful, they're going to take her away from me, and they're going to kill me to be able to marry Sarah. And he says, and it came to pass... Uh, when he was he come near to enter into Egypt, and then he said unto Sarah's wife, Behold, now I know uh, that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Behold, the, 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 also in our text says, Behold, now, behold, now he knew that Adam was naked, and it's similar to this in, in in Abraham, where it says, Behold, now I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. The 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 Rashi and the medieval commentators asked, Did Abraham never know that Sarah is gorgeous? Right, that Sarah is beautiful. Of course Abraham knew that he was beautiful. Did she really never know? So there are some commentators, actually Rashi quotes an opinion before what he's about to quote, that yeah, Abraham didn't really know. He didn't pay attention to these physical things, right? He was uh, didn't really know. And until he saw uh, Sarah's reflection in the Nile uh, and saw how beautiful she was, uh, then, then that's when they knew that he knew that she was actually gorgeous and he needed to worry about this. But Rashi actually brings up a second um, comment, which he says is actually the simple meaning. He says, According to the simple meaning, I actually knew before that Sarah was beautiful, but now that now the time has come in which Sarah's beauty can actually be a danger to us, and I have to worry about this, right? So of course, Avram knew, Avram knew that Sarah's Sarah was beautiful, but he didn't realize that it could actually be a danger to him, and now he has to take special precautions because he knows that this could be a danger to him. 
right? And same thing, thusly here also, back in the text, this is the meaning of they knew. That is, they knew that in truth before that they were naked without the clothing of mitzvot. But they didn't really pay much attention to this. They only engrossed themselves in intellectual matters and not in the doing of mitzvot. And now after the sin, they actually understood that they were naked without the mitzvot. And this being naked of the clothing of a mitzvot even caused the sin since they did not have uh, mitzvot to protect them um, from the forces that worked against them as is known. And that's the end of the teaching. Meaning, um, now Abraham knew after seeing the damage the sin caused that he needed to do mitzvot. And he needed to really guard in doing mitzvot because otherwise he was going to be enticed into these sins and he was going to uh, be damaged, right? And he realized that he needs to be doing mitzvot in a, in a real way. He needs to be protected. And he needs to have this, he, he needs to have this feeling of protection. He needs to um, be connected to Hashem by doing mitzvot. Um, and when he's not, he feels bad. There's something bad going on. He feels disconnected to Hashem. And now that he knows what being disconnected from Hashem feels like, he realizes that he needs to be constantly dressed in the spiritual clothing, which is the reward for doing mitzvot. Um, and that, that is the essence of the teaching here. That if we just... The essence of the teaching of what he's trying to say here, and it's a standard Hasidic teaching at that, is that... If we just are satisfied with Judaism and our Yiddishkeit uh, being a, an intellectual pursuit, maybe we read articles and we, uh, we have debates with our friends about it, and we talk about Israel, we talk about the Torah, we talk about etc. etc. That's nice and that's good. But the Torah and, and the Tzanzar here is saying very, very uh, precisely that this is nothing without actually doing action of advocacy, um, doing actions of mitzvot in the world, um, if, if, if the comprehensions that you have or the, the, the esoteric wisdom or the, um, the, the, the books you read um, don't lead to action or don't lead to you actually doing holy things in the world, they mean nothing. They mean nothing. They don't add to our protection in this world. They don't add to what God wants of us. They don't add to connecting to Hashem really. Uh, they have to have um, actions connected to it. So... That's for that reason, even the, the biggest Talmud Chacham in the world still has to dab in the Shema uh, when the time for the Shema comes, okay? Even the biggest Talmud Chacham in the world, even though he's read um, the Torah many times, he still has to listen to the Torah portion when it's read on Shabbos. Okay, these are more religious examples, but it's also the same in our society. Um, if you care about Israel and you want to, and, and, and you see that Israel is in danger, um, and you have discussions with your friends about it, and you talk about it, but you don't actually stand up and advocate to Congress or you do something about it, um, then then that's really not a, ho a holy action. You don't really connect to God through that action, and that can't stand. You're really not doing much. Um, same thing, if you think there's a problem in, in, in the world in general, um, whether it's the refugee crisis, the gun, gun problems, uh, poverty, um, hunger, and you think it's an issue, you think it's something you have to... Uh, uh, deal with you talk about it with your friends and everything but you don't actually do anything about it you don't actually advocate or you don't try to work in a soup kitchen or you don't try to do something that that actually changes that reality then you're not doing what Hashem wants of you and you're not building that spiritual cloak that protects us that really makes us um, that higher individual that we're all looking for that way of connecting to Hashem and this is what Adam had to teach us when he was when he was embarrassed to not have the clothing of mitzvot on. This is what Adam found out, that, that, that living is nothing unless we actually do real actions in the world. We can't just be satisfied with uh, intellectual uh, comprehensions or um, just thoughts, but we actually need to do actions in the world. Um, and doing this action sort of creates a spiritual aura around us and, and really um, changes the way we live. And not only that, it changes the world around us and makes the world around us a better place. So, Kenny Ratzon all the, the thinking and the thought we've done uh, about ourselves this past high holiday period and all the holidays and everything like that, hopefully um, this will lead us into good actions in the world um, to try to change our reality, try to change the world around us to make it a better place, um, to do many mitzvot um, and, and to pray and to, and to do the things that uh, make us Jewish and make us unique in that regard. So please... Um, join with me in redoubling our efforts to do actions in this world, good actions, holy actions that connect us to Hashem. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you soon at Temple Sinai of Middletown. I look forward to learning again with you next week. Shabbat Shalom.